Hi everyone. My name is Atusa Rahbar and I am a second year medical student at the University of Washington School of Medicine. This presentation is my research project in collaboration with Seattle Children's Research Institute and it's about creating armored CAR T cells that target IL-1 RAP which can be a potential therapy for Ewing sarcoma. Some background information. Ewing sarcoma is the second most common bone tumor in children. Even though the survival rate for patients with localized tumors has improved from 10% to 75% with chemotherapy, but for patients with metastases, the survival rate is still below 30%, which has not been improving for the past few decades. This calls for other modalities to treat Ewing sarcoma, such as CAR T cell therapy. Why do we target IL-1 RAP? IL-1 RAP is a cell surface protein which aids in metastasis by replenishing some amino acid for tumor cells, and that way it protects them from metabolic and oxidative stress. IL-1 RAP is not highly expressed on healthy cells, but is differentially expressed on Ewing sarcoma tumor cells, makes it a great target for treatment. In this project, CAR T cells are designed to express anti-IL-1 RAP binders in order to target Ewing sarcoma for immune recognition and elimination. To design the CAR T cells, in addition to IL-1 RAP, we worked on TGF-beta and PD-1. The studies show that Ewing sarcoma tumor cells produce TGF-beta in their microenvironment, which is known to dull the effect of T cells, rendering them ineffective. Also, PD-1 interaction on T cell with PDL1 on tumor cells is one of the inhibitory mechanisms that decrease cell cytotoxicity. By armoring anti-IL-1 RAP CAR T cells with dominant negative TGF beta receptor 2 and dominant negative PD-1, we diminish the signaling capacity of TGF beta pathway while providing protection against PDL1 interactions. This slide is showing TGF beta and PD1 receptors, and the X's represent the ablation site of intracellular domain to make dominant negative TGF beta receptor 2 and dominant negative PD1. This schematic is showing plasmid constructs two CD19 cars as control and two IL1 wrap cars each one with and without the decoy receptors. I should mention that we call CD19 cars as AKR001 and 2 and IL-1 RAP cars as AKR003 and 004. We started the project with cloning, which included using digestive enzymes NOT1 and NHE1 to digest out plasmids containing CAR encoding fragments of CD19 and IL-1 RAP. Then we ligated the fragments into new backbones IJG001 with decoy receptors and IJG002 without decoys. Proper ligation was verified through gel electrophoresis and sequencing. These are the DNA electrophoresis images of digested AKR001 through 4 with backbone IJG001 and IJG002 which represent proper ligation. Next step was lentivirus production, in which we used the HEC293 T-cell line. Then they got transfected with our AKR001 through four plasmids, and after that, we used jerk cells to titrate lentivirus vectors. Figure 4 is showing transient, meaning 72-hour expression of four plasmids, and as expected, CARs and the decoy receptors are properly expressed. Figure 5 is showing the full cytometry results of jerked cells lentivirus titration to get the number of functional lentiviruses. We set up six different dilutions with different amount of lentivirus vectors, which created a gradient of lentiviruses, meaning that the more lentivirus we use, the more CARs are expressed on jerked cells.
So what's next? This project created decoy armored CAR T cells that will potentially be more effective against earring sarcoma tumors compared to previously made CAR T cells without decoy receptors. Next steps include PBMC transduction with lentivirus, flow cytometry to ensure the expression of CARs on T cells, killing assays to test the function of CAR T cells, and tests on mice to verify the effectiveness of armored CAR T cells in reducing Ewing sarcoma tumor cells. Thank you so much for visiting my post there.